How are you doing everybody? Jonathan here. And in this video, I'm going to cover a topic that a lot of you has had a lot of questions on, and that is how do I become a strength and conditioning coach at the high school level, at the collegiate level, at the professional level to train athletes in the area of strength and conditioning, speed training, things like that. I've gotten a lot of questions in this area, and I've diligently searched out the right source to give you the right kind of information, as that is not something that I necessarily have a lot of expertise in. Now, I have actually been able to secure an interview with the head strength and conditioning coach of the New York Football Giants, uh, Coach Jerry Palmieri. He sat down with me, and I'm going to shortly take you to an uncut interview where he's going to give you his life's path, his advice on a career path, certifications that you can get. He's going to plan it all out for you, and it's probably the best uh, video source that you're going to find on how to get to the industry. Now, one thing I want you to understand is that Coach Palmieri has been very gracious in, uh, in his dealings with me and giving me this information. He invited me over to the training facility of the New York Giants. Now, Coach Palmieri has expressed a lot of interest in his ability to help you guys. So, if you guys have any questions, you'd be best served, if you have any questions specifically on this topic, to put your questions in the comment section below. All right, don't email me directly, don't uh, message me on Facebook, although you can always add me as a friend on Facebook, but this is especially where I'm going to look if you guys have any questions so that if I come across him, uh, Coach Palmieri, or if we exchange ideas more, I can present to him the questions you have the most. So sit back, get out a piece of paper, get out a notepad, write down as much as you can, uh, take in the information. Like I said, I'm not going to be doing a lot of talking, and I hope this helps you on your path to becoming a strength and conditioning coach. All right, I'm with Coach Jerry Palmieri, the head strength and conditioning coach of the New York Football Giants. Um, coach Palmieri, thank you for meeting with me. Um, as you know, a lot of our audience is interested in becoming a strength and conditioning coach, and they're looking for ideas on how to uh, get their way into the industry. Now, this is not something that I necessarily excel in, but thank you very much for responding to my emails. And I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind my asking, on how you get into the industry. Sure, I'll go right ahead. All right, so the, um, the main question, I guess, would be most helpful is, how did you find yourself in this position right here as a head coach of a, of a major football team? Well, you know, I, I started as a volunteer. I, I went, when I graduated from college, I taught at the high school level. I coached the high school level. Then I went off my graduate work at the University of North Carolina. I did a graduate assistantship in exercise physiology, and I taught um, some physical education classes, which helped me help pay for the education. And uh, I volunteered as a strength and conditioning coach at the University of North Carolina. And after a semester volunteering, um, they put me on as part time. They really didn't have GA ships at that point mm -hmm. when I began the profession. And if I can cut you off, uh, GA is graduate assistant ships. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't have that in the area of strength and conditioning at North Carolina at that time. Um, I was a teaching assistant, so that's where I got some extra money to, to pay for schooling. But they, uh, they hired me on part-time, mm -hmm. and then I stayed on through the uh, remaining semesters that I did my graduate work and, and uh, obtained a great deal of experience and great mentorship from a gentleman by the name of Mike Marks. He was the head strength coach at that time at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. By the grace of God, I met a man by the name of John Stuckey, uh, a, a great strength coach. Uh, we had some uh, mutual friends through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and uh, he took a liking to me, and he invited me to go out to Oklahoma State University with him okay. uh, to be his assistant. He took a job as a head guy out there. Uh, at Oklahoma State, I had to teach about nine credit hours in the Department of Physical Education. I taught uh, kinesiology, I taught nutrition, I taught health and wellness, and as well as weight training classes. And then I did, did that in the morning, then in the afternoon I, I was a strength and assistant strength and conditioning coach. Most of our training occurred in the afternoon. Okay. And then from there, I received my uh, first head job at Kansas State University. So now we're, it's about uh, 1987. Okay. And I uh, coached six and a half years at Kansas State and then um, went on to Boston College. Coach Coughlin hired me there. Uh, coached two years there. And then went to the Jacksonville Jaguars in 1995. That was my first head strength conditioning job at, in the NFL. With Coach? With Coach yes, Coughlin? Absolutely, okay. yes. And then uh, I spent eight years in Jacksonville. Uh, our staff got fired after the 2002 season. Uh, good Lord provided an opportunity for me to, to go as an assistant uh, to 
to New Orleans Saints. I worked with a good friend of mine by the name of Rock Culkson. And uh, after one year there, Coach Kauf was hired here in 2004 with New York Giants. He invited me to join his staff back then, and I've been here ever since. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you had a lot of movement um, from the time that you first just volunteered to getting here. So it's yeah. it's not usually just going to be a straight line when it comes to um, when it comes to becoming a strength and conditioning coach. Um, I think you can understand. I started at the high school level. Right. So uh, and and while I was in college, I started uh, coaching football with the with the junior leagues. Okay. So uh, just getting involved in coaching, period. Is a, is, is a good experience, a good entry level. Okay. And did you find that you needed any specific criteria or um, certifications to get into coaching? Or is it well, really your education kind of helped? Well, back then we didn't have certification for okay. strength and conditioning coach. Uh, that began in 1985 with the NSCA. They started the CSCS. Right. And that's when I first year they made it available. I took the certification exam and passed it. Okay. And... Um, so I think it's a valuable certification to get. Uh, the National Strength and Condition Association is highly recognized across the board as a, a reputable association. Right. And uh, so I think, it, you know, I've actually thought about this for a number of years that it will come to this, that uh, one will be required to have that certification in order to coach at, a, at the collegiate uh, or professional level. Okay. Uh, hasn't got to that point yet, but it may very well um, come to that in some time. So okay. I highly recommend that uh, people get that certification. But you need the education first. Okay. The certification is just a stamp saying you know what you're doing. Right. It's the education that's going to train you and give you the experience and the, uh, the coaching experience that's going to help you be a quality strength and conditioning coach. Okay, and and that kind of led into the um, to the second question anyway, because a lot of people ask about schooling. Um, do you think that an exercise science major versus a kinesiology major um, makes a difference one way or the other if you're going to get the CSCS anyway, or what would you know in your experience? What have you found to be the best um, level or decision for a major? As this is, this is what I recommend, mm -hmm. and. A lot of people did not take this route. This is the route that I took. Okay. Uh, I went, I grew up here in New Jersey, went to Montclair State College back then. I graduated in 1980. Right. And I was a physical education teacher. And I recommend people go through the, the route of physical education mm. as an undergraduate. And here's okay. the reason why. If you cannot teach, you cannot coach. It's true. Okay. Coaching is teaching. So that's what I recommend uh, somebody does. Plus... Our profession is getting so flooded at this point. So if you're certified to teach, you can go into a high school, you can teach, and then you can be a strength and conditioning coach at a high school. Right. Okay, and and um, our profession becomes so popular, and coaches are recognizing the need to excel, that if you have that, that skill, they often have to want to have that kind of individual in their school system. Right. So you could be a strength and conditioning coach at a high school. Uh, yeah, you may, that may not be what you want to be, okay? But a job is a job, right. and it's a rewarding job, and it's, it's, it's a, a well-paying job and with great benefits. So, but somebody with exercise science can never go be a teacher because they're not certified. Right. Somebody who's a teacher can be a personal trainer, can work in a in a fitness type setting because they have some background in science mm -hmm. uh, just through the general physical education program. Gotcha. Then you go on for your master's degree and that's where you specialize in your exercise science. Okay. Okay, whether it be spe specific like kinesiology or biomechanics or exercise physiology. I chose exercise physiology but now there are many programs that have an exercise science which is a broad, uh, a broad covering which is basically what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did exercise physiology, I did, I did advanced exercise physiology, uh, then I did biomechanics while I was there, I took a nutrition class. So, but now programs are set up where they have all those encompassed in one program. Okay. Now, you know, I've had a lot of young men come and work under me who have gone strictly the exercise science route. They've done well. Um, Springfield College has an outstanding program 
both the undergraduate and the graduate level, and it's specifically designed to help you to be a strength and conditioning coach. Uh, they do a great job. Um, but again, those students coming out cannot be a teacher if they can't find a job. Right. It gives you uh, more flexibility for your profession. And uh, you can also build a, a very big network in the education system as well. Sure you can. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my my recommendation. Uh, so I don't want to teach. I don't, you know, okay, you, you know, you don't want to teach, but, you know, uh, uh, teaching is more rewarding than just babysitting. You know, right. It's, it's a great, it, it's a great uh, experience, and I think uh, um, it's going to help you in the long run. Uh, especially, like I said, the, the profession is becoming very flooded mm -hmm. at this time. Okay. And I was going to ask a question about uh, a specific certification, um, the, CSC, uh, the CSCCA certification, um, for people that are out of school. It's a, you know, a bunch of different certifications, then you do a practical in front of a board, um, and that kind of puts you in, an op uh, in a position to get a, an internship. Um, so for people out of school, um, is that something that you would recommend, or do you still uh, think that perhaps going back for teaching because of all the benefits that you, you know, put out right now, would probably be a better route. Well, that certification is good. Either that certification or the CSCS. So you put I, them almost on the same level. I, I, I would. Okay. Now, you know, the, uh, the, the latter one you just referred to um, is specifically designed for coaches at the college level. Right. As a matter of fact, you couldn't even apply for it unless you had a job as a, as a strength as a college strength coach. Okay. And it was, was it was designed to give more to the true strength and conditioning profession of college coaches. Gotcha. Uh, because the uh, CSCS was broad, uh, the NSCA was, was, was getting more broad. It was talking about uh, fitness specialists and, uh, um, yeah, you know, covering a lot of different areas. They have a lot of, like, new certifications right. now. And so that... Mm -hmm. That, well, this was specifically for strength and conditioning coach at the college level. Right. I think it's a good certification. Uh, I don't have that certification. It, it came out, you know, I was in the NFL when I came out. So uh, I never have earned that certification. Okay. I have the CSCS. Um, yeah, but if you are at school and you are you feel that you're uh, – um, you want to get more education, I think definitely getting certified in one of those two. Well, I'm not sure you would qualify unless you have a job. Right, it's almost putting the cart before yeah. the horse. So yeah. the so CSCS would probably be the better option. Right, and, it, and it's highly, it's, it's, it's nationally recognized. Absolutely. For sure. Um, you know, a lot of times someone says, well, how do I get started? Well, you know, I was fortunate enough to go, to go uh, um, and work man as well, myself in as a volunteer. Um, we at the at the New York Giants cannot take volunteers mm -hmm. because it, there's labor laws, but we cannot do that. And uh, so it's not something that, that I can do, mm -hmm. but um, oftentimes colleges will, will take you on as, as a volunteer. I think the, uh, if I was to recommend someone to go back to graduate school, I would recommend they go to a, a school that one, has a quality exercise science program. Doesn't have to have the best. Mm -hmm. Has to have a quality one where you're going to learn and be challenged. It doesn't have to be the very very best. Then one that has a, a school that has an outstanding strength conditioning program. Quality coach, mm -hmm. uh, not somebody who puts a workout on the board and then you know sits in his office while the athletes train. A coach who's who's uh, involved and uh, training the athletes well. And uh, for everyone who has a, has a carries himself with a good reputation. Then, thirdly, have a, a attend a school that's got a big name to it. Okay. okay like University of Alabama, University of Florida, University of Tennessee, uh, you know, Rutgers, uh, Syracuse. You know, um, just because name matters. Right. When somebody gets a resume. And says you're a, you you were a graduate assistant at uh, the University of North Carolina, or the University of Georgia, mm -hmm. um, or, 
Ohio State University would take notice of that. Whereas if, if it was a smaller school, like, well, you know, what experience did he get there? Right, right, because you're working with higher yeah. level athletes and, yeah. and such. And, and whether it's well. fair or not, I mm -hmm. mean, that could be the, the, the best program at Montclair State University. Okay? Right. And if somebody who's done doing strength and conditioning over there could be an outstanding coach. But it's not going to be recognized just on, on the name alone. Okay. Uh, I was blessed that somebody gave me the opportunity and uh, was able to move forward with it. Okay. So um, obviously you made the most out of your opportunities um, you've got here. Uh, now, for people that, you know, don't have the a clearest idea of what it's like to be a strength and conditioning coach, um, what would you say are the you know most rewarding aspects of your job? Um, what present the most challenges as your uh, probably experience? the most rewarding is, is, is seeing a young man, whether he's a high school athlete, a college athlete, or an NFL athlete, get better, get stronger, uh, become more agile, become more fit, and you know when they recognize themselves getting better. They appreciate what you've done for them. Mm -hmm. They really do. And uh, you know, on a college level, I had the opportunity to work with women as well. And it's amazing when you show women some attention because they so often get neglected in athletics, especially right. when, when when I was uh, uh, in in college athletics. And uh, you show them some, uh, some attention. They they appreciate it so much, and they feel appreciated and here. Uh, long after the, an athlete is gone and someone comes back, hey, I ran into so-and-so and there's so many great things to say about that you really cared about them, you helped them get better as an athlete, that is rewarding to me. Mm -hmm. Help somebody else excel to reach their fullest potential. That's what I want to do and when those things happen, it's, it's truly rewarding. Um, the challenges, you know, you always get, get a couple of athletes that don't want to train, mm -hmm. don't want to do it. They, they're interested in getting by and, and uh, not doing the full workout, and uh, you could have 50 athletes that, that train the, the tails off. Mm -hmm. Or if you have three who just didn't feel good about, didn't really give maximal effort, you know, um, maybe you felt like they, I wasn't sure if they skipped a couple of exercises here and there. Right. It ruins your day. And so mm -hmm. you got 50 that did great, but you had three who you're unsure about. Right, and, th and, and that you, you take that to heart. Take that person, absolutely. Okay, so yeah. you know, it's funny the um the the two things that I get, or I guess the main thing is, um, regardless of the level, um, I think so often people think that if you're a strength and conditioning coach at you know a, a professional sports team, it's really just all about you know working for a sports team in particular. But the way that you explain it, you seem like you would have the same amount of fulfillment from teaching you know the high school level all the way up to you're just working with a slightly more advanced athlete mm -hmm. um so it seems like the the main thing that you want to have is just a love for people and a general interest in the betterment of the people that you work with exactly and, right. and quite frankly I, I i tell people all the time uh, i coach out of love you know i show love to others by by helping them caring for them and that's going to motivate them and it's going to gain respect from them to me and uh, so if, 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 you, if they, you, you love them, you, sh you create an environment where they want to come in and train, that's half the battle. If they feel they have to come in and train and uh, you know, you're going to yell and scream at them and, and that's your form of motivation, mm -hmm. which, which some guys do and they do it very well. Right. It's just not my style. And you don't have to be that to be a successful strength and conditioning coach. Uh, I don't believe you do. No, I feel you have to have energy. Sure. You have to love what you do. You have to be excited about what you do. But, but, it, but it can't be phony energy. Mm -hmm. It can't be rah rah. Here we go. You know, it's 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 who you are, and so um, well, there's times where you know a after we lose, you know, we come in a game where, where I'm not not at my highest peak, and you know, the players notice that, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I got to pick myself back up to get them. Sometimes they say, "Coach, you got you got you got to going. Okay, you're in this funk." Right, and. Um, the only good part about that, I want them to know that it hurts to lose. Some yeah. guys forget too quickly. And uh, and it's funny that you say that because um, you're not necessarily out there calling plays, but you're still associated. Like you still have, you still want to see them do well in in all areas. So you still feel that as still a coach. Still part of a team, and you still want to win. Right. That's that's the objective. You know. 
and uh, Mark, you know, here? we typically uh, we typically get associated with the football team. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm at Boston College. You know, when I was uh, um, involved with the hockey team, when they lost, I was upset. Yeah. You know, or the basketball team. You know, so. Um, you know, you, you, you're connected, you feel connected to the athletes, and when they succeed, you succeed. Right. When they fail, you, so, you have a sense of failure as well. Okay. I mean, that's, um, I think that's everything that people need to understand, um, whether it's personal training, whether it's strength and conditioning coaching, um, that just genuine love for your client is what's going to motivate them, it's what's going to motivate you. Um, you know, the almighty dollar or the name across your chest is not going to get you up every morning if you don't really care about the person. Um, so this is, uh, you know, this is kind of like a, a last question. Um, what makes you you? You know, you, you have this, uh, obviously you can't get to this level without having, you know, the knowledge and, you know, the bravery to, to you know, to move around. But you also do it with a, a calmer demeanor. Um, you know how to get your point across without having to beat people down, which is what I think a lot of people mistakenly get in this industry think that they need to do. So how do you balance your, um, your, your aggression and, you know, with your, with your just your calmness and your, your gentleness? How do you do that? Well, no, I'm, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. okay? And, and God is very important to me. And I want to represent him well, whatever I do. So when I come to work, I want to be the best I can be at my job. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I use a a verse Ecclesiastes uh, nine ten. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. That's my philosophy in life. That's my philosophy in training. I want my guys to come in and be the best they can be. Whatever we ask them to do, how we ask them to do it, to do it to the fullest uh, of the expectations that we have for them. And um, that's what I challenge them. I try to balance my life that way. Um, I try to put you know get out of, out of balance. Well, sometimes I do. I, I, I spend a lot of time here, and I mm -hmm. love my job. But I still have a beautiful wife. I have kids that require my time as well. Right. And uh, I got to balance myself so I do my job well, do it to the fullest, uh, give glory to, to, to God, and then go home and, and glorify my Lord as I, I take care of my family as well. So um, I think balance is, is a key, and just understand that. Whatever you do, whether you're taking out trash, do it to the best of your ability. Or whether you're coaching NFL athletes, mm -hmm. be the best that you can be. I think you, you take all that advice and you'll have no problem being successful. Um, so I just want to thank you for meeting with me. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to thank you for sharing, you know, opening up, giving me all the advice that you could. Um, I've actually reached out to a number of people, and um, Coach Palmer was the only one. And I think a lot of what he is, or basically everything he said, um, if you can take this to heart, will help you to be successful as you look to achieve your goal in this industry or whatever industry. Um, so, again, thanks, Coach. Okay, Jonathan. Um, good luck with the rest of the season, and um, I'll see you guys later. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. I haven't made a video in a while, and that's mainly because I've been concentrating a lot of my energy on getting the information that I need to answer the questions that I see the most often, and not a lot of it is going to come to me directly. So I need to go out, I need to find the information and bring it back to you. So as long as you keep the lines of communication open, I will always be uh, available to try to put together content that will help you. I have a CSCS review coming up soon. I have a NASM certification review coming up soon. Uh, videos on how to pass any certification exam, or at least the anatomy portion of it, some basics that I've seen with all the certifications that I have. And of course, whatever questions I see in my Facebook page, on Twitter, or from this channel, I will do my best to answer in a timely fashion. So again, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comment below. And as always, remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels low, get rest. Don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They will love you back. I will see you all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.